Hey everyone, today we'll be running you through an explosive lane phase from top laner Sword, who plays for the new dominant rookie LCK team, Griffin. What you'll be learning today is how to go aggressive in lane to build up huge advantages without having to score kills, but instead by building up CS leads. It's difficult to get excited by learning how to gain a CS lead since most players simply do not convert on them to anything close to how they convert on kills. However, today we'll be showing you how something as small as a 10 CS lead can win you the lane if you play it outright. We'll also be showing you how to play aggro without dying to ganks, so regardless of what top laner you play, you'll learn stuff. But especially if you play aggressive laners such as Kennen, Jace, Nar, Darius or Swain. The matchup that we'll be using today is from Sword on the Jace versus Hanwha Life's top laner Linderang on Kennen. Jace deals more damage in this matchup, but needs to go into melee form to land his burst. Kennen's damage is also pretty high, but lies more in consistently landing harass into stuns. For wave clear, Jace out shoves easily with his range orders and melee form Q. Kennen has to E to thin the wave and W after to get any decent wave clear. For range, they're pretty similar outside of Jace's EQ combo. The game plan for Jace will be to utilize his wave clear edge to shove in Kennen and deny CS. He'll want to convert this into either scoring kills or ideally, first turret of the game. So his primary missions for this game will be to mission 1, push the wave, mission 2, harass on last hits, mission 3, don't get ganked, and mission 4, get first tower. Kennen needs to look for opportunities to harass Jace when he tries to shove and or go for a gank onto Jace with his jungler. Playing safe until level 6 is also good for the Kennen, who can use that to land a super easy gank onto the Jace or elsewhere on the map with teleport. For this game, Jace is playing TP and has Camille for the jungle, and Kennen is playing Spellbook, starting with teleport, and is playing with a Nocturne. Let's get into the gameplay. As the game starts, Jace goes over to ward the Tribrush. We're seeing this a lot lately with the mid laner also warding up around the river entrance. This is to deal with the meta of level 2 ganks, and it also helps your own jungler see which crab the opposing jungler goes for with both river entrances covered. If your mid laner does not ward their river entrance, then you would rather ward the river area instead for the level 2 gank and maybe scout the scuttle. Jace ends up finding Kennen sitting in the tri brush, fulfilling sentry duty. Jace knows that he does way more damage in Kennen at level 1 since he basically has two abilities alongside his passive, making him perhaps the most bursty level 1 champion in the game. Knowing this, he chunks down Kennen to 35% health. This is an extreme example, but if you know that you deal more damage at level 1 than your opponent, then go for this type of aggression since their jungler won't help out at 1 minute 30 on the clock and with their camp spawning. Top laners are often in this tri brush. With this huge immediate health lead, Jace tries to zone off Kennen from CS and experience. This doesn't work out well as he aggroed the minions and took a Q from the Kennen, also aggroing the melee minions which shouldn't happen. It was a nice idea but didn't work out this time. He starts the mission 1 by pushing the wave. He does this by ordering the minions actively and he's also looking for jungle threat right now. Thinking back to our video on Viper, who didn't delay his early push on Darius when there was jungle threat, Sword knows that he can push right now on the Jace, as he scouts the enemy Nocturne bot side. Small thing here, but know how Jace baits out Kennen's Q by walking up, as if he's about to go and trade? And then he sidesteps the Q and keeps pushing. Baiting out Kennen's ability on himself and not the wave will accelerate his push. This is just a small thing that he does with his free time, and it does add up. Jace pushes to the tower by actively ordering, saving his abilities to preserve mana and leaving them available for potential trades. He sees Nocturne go topside here on the minimap, but he's pushing. This is good information for mission 3, but let's talk about a few things here for dealing with early jungle presence. Firstly, though this ward is nice to confirm that Nocturne is coming top, he didn't need it to know that. The two early wards placed by mid and top make it super likely that Nocturne started bot side because they didn't scout Nocturne go for scuttle or an early gank on the top side. So Jace will know that between around 2 minutes 35 and 3 minutes, Nocturne will be top side and could gank. To 
deal with that, he could play back in the lane, look to ward, don't push as fast, that type of thing. But in this case, he could even 1v2 with his health lead, large wave and high damage champion, a level 2 nocturne gank would be incredibly risky. Anyway, Jace continues to push all of the way to the tower. Once he's reached the tower, he actively orders it for mission 4, which is the most important mission. But with towers taking 50% less damage until 5 minutes, his main goal here would be to harass for mission 2. He's looking to hit an EQ combo as soon as possible, so he's waiting for his Q to come off cooldown, and then he will go for it while Kennen goes for a last hit. Kennen goes for a last hit, and then he gets EQ'd. This perhaps seems fairly basic, but the discipline here is essential. When going for harass that costs a sizable amount of mana, like it does for Jace, you only want to fire it when you have the highest possible chance of landing your skill shot. So waiting for Kennen to push up to get this caster was essential. Jace now correctly positions in this area here, which is further from the tower than the top half of the lane, allowing him to land an auto and getting out of tower range as we can see. Let's speed it up as he continues to shove the wave for mission 1. Alright, now at this point we can see Nocturne show on the Tribrush ward, so he's just cleared the scuttle. Sword immediately pulls back just for a second and likely panned his camera over to Nocturne to see what's up. He had seen no red buff on the Nocturne yet and Nocturne still being level 2. If Nocturne tried to gank at level 2 with the cannon on half life, they wouldn't be able to get the kill and could die to Jace. In lower elo, the Nocturne would probably try for this gank anyway as we've seen recently from Hector's Riven smurf game, where you can turn it. Moving on, Jace continues pushing, and we can see that his Camille ends up invading Nocturne. If you were the Jace here, would you use your lane priority to help out, or would you stay in lane? Think about it. The correct choice is to stay in lane. Camille is a strong early jungler who won't need help with this invade. Galio could follow up if Talon roams, and Jace can stay in lane and keep Kennen here. There's no reason to give up lane pressure to help someone that does not need it. If the tables were turned though, and the opposing jungler invaded bot side jungle, it would be a no brainer to use your lane priority to close in and help out. So Jace keeps pushing and shoves in the next wave. Everything is going great so far. He's pushing, he's harassing, he's not getting ganked, but it doesn't seem like he's gaining a big lead, right? Nothing that he can use to carry the game at least. But at this point in time, he has a 7 CS lead over the cannon. Now that may not seem like a lot, but it's about 130 gold and should allow him to get an item advantage on his first recall. We'll talk more about that in a moment. For now, Jace is in melee form and starts to order for mana, so he can harass again when he shoves his next wave. Kennen actually does a pretty good job at punishing this, demonstrating how much harass that Kennen can pull off as a lane dominant champion himself, especially versus melees. This obviously isn't great for Sword, but he's done such a great job so far, it doesn't really matter. He still has a potion and he has enough mana to land more harass when he shoves. Now we're about to see a cool way of trading that we'll run you through here. As Jace is about to go for this last hit, Kennen is going to look to harass. This is something that we teach all of the time, right? Harass when your opponent goes for a last hit. However, if you suspect that your opponent will harass you on a last hit, which Jace does, then you can reverse engineer it and skip going for the last hit and take a great trade instead, providing that you're stronger, which Jace still is. He takes a great trade by using a Q on a minion to land an AoE onto Kennen, autos, knock back, auto into EQ, just barely missing the kill. He could try to flash to the bot side of the turret here to finish it off, but it would risk trading flashes with Kennen if he reacts in time. So he's going to hold his flash for a later all in, or to stay aggressive and use it versus ganks. Anyway, Jace shoves and recalls. Currently he has a 10 CS lead. He uses this advantage to buy a Doran shield, longsword, control ward and health potion, 
as his new purchases alongside his starting item, Doran's Blade. Kennen has an amp term, control ward, refillable alongside his starting item, Doran's Shield. Breaking down these item differences, Jace is considerably stronger with the early game item Doran's Shield, making him much tankier alongside the extra DPS from his blade and long sword. While Kennen's combat item is just a component that won't add much power to his lane phase in comparison. He makes the aggressive choice to recall straight back into lane which aligns with the mission 4. He wants to pressure and get that first turret. He places his control ward in the tri brush. He has to start worrying about Nocturne's point of power, level 6, while he's trying to push working on missions 1 and 3. This ward is great because it will likely scout Nocturne's level 6 ulti which doesn't have a ton of range and most Nocturnes do it from the jungle. Kennen moves to place his own control ward and gets both harassed and denied. This is excellent play from the Jace and will apply a ton of gank threat pressure now as he moves forward. He then places a deep river ward to scout Nocturne from another angle. Now Sword heads back into lane and what we're about to see is a very visible difference between two types of players. The few who convert on small CS leads and everyone else. So that's what a CS lead can look like if you base, buy and then get aggressive. Let's roll it back and see what types of champions that you can make this play on. Jace waits for the next red wave to connect to his blue wave before going in. This is something that you always want to do so you don't immediately tank minion damage by going in. So the minion wave looks massive, right? Way too large to trade into. But as a lane dominant champion with the extra tankiness from his item advantage, he can go for this play. Kennen decided to kite away to the tower with Jace following. So Jace actually took next to no minion damage by kiting the wave as he chased Kennen. Had Kennen stayed to utilize his wave, he would have gotten the Jace low but wouldn't have had enough damage to kill him at level 5 with no ulti. Champions that you can do this really aggressive forced trade into big waves with a similar item lead would be like Na, Kennen, Swain, champs who can push up and just deal a lot of burst damage. If Jace had used his W here, he would have scored the kill. With the unfortunate miss kill, Jace shoves and recalls. He gets a larger CS lead from this, which allows him to buy another longsword with a control ward while Kennen buys boots. As Jace comes back into lane, he immediately starts looking to utilize his continuous item advantage to convert on his CS lead. He goes for a very aggressive play by sneaking into the middle brush while Kennen is clearing a ward and does not notice. He sits and waits as Kennen pushes up. Again, this is a giant wave and this time Kennen is level 6. Let's see how this plays out. Alright, so that was super close despite the item lead, let's find out why. So this works because he landed his EQ from out of vision. The reason it's close is because of the wave, Kennen being level 6, but mostly because Kennen summoner swapped to ignite. We don't think that sword accounted for that and perhaps would not have went for this had he known, but it still paid off. Anyway, speeding this up as we're heading towards the end of today's guide, he shoves into a recall. He did risk dying to Nocturne with this shove, but it paid off. He places yet another ward in the tri brush for the Nocturne and continues with all four of his missions. He's looking to shove and harass and will get to work on the tower when he pushes all the way. At this point, Camille is looking to give top lane some attention, so Jace goes in and hits a full combo, to which Nocturne responds and they trade positively 2 for 1. More importantly, this gives Jace the first tower, completing mission 4. Even if this didn't happen, Jace would have rinsed and repeated his missions and got the first tower by himself, thanks to his unrelenting lane pressure converted from CS leads. 
Let's get you today's takeaways. Alright, so Jace went into this matchup knowing that he dominates the 1v1 with superior wave clear and burst. He used this to crush Kennen in the tri brush and then shove, but shoving makes you a target for the enemy jungler, so he was vigilant about Nocturne ganks. Thanks to smart wards and also his Camille pressuring the Nocturne, he was able to take an isolated lane phase versus Kennen nearly the entire time, gaining so much pressure that Nocturne wasn't able to gank while he was even topside. Jace was unfortunate that he didn't score early kills, but he did score a CS lead which he was able to translate into huge results. He did this by shoving the wave when he was low on resources, buying and then turning up the heat when he had an item lead. He rinsed and repeated until he was finally able to score a kill, into another kill, and then finally get the tower. But he would have got first tower regardless of jungle help thanks to his CS lead Lin. Alright, so that's it for this one. If you want part 2 where we see Jays translate this lead, then let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.